Hello everybody again and welcome to another episode of Stock Talk. I am your host Mike and with me is the Tricky. Kage, how's it going? Oh, you, you cut me off there, there Kage. Were you going to try to do a Chinese sword there or what? No, uh, Chinese sword, not very accurate and uh, not my style. So you like, you like the... It's, it's effective, sure, but it's more ceremonial than anything else. You like the Shigawa I, sword, right? It's more practical. Well, I've got a decent show planned for you today. Uh, did you did you catch the zero hedge article uh, for talking points? Uh, this this news article about uh, Facebook, fake book. Oh yeah, the Facebook is just just weak right now, and people are sensing it, and they're not wanting to have any part of it. Listener engage or, or is it viewership engagement engagement Twitter. Everybody's moving over to Getter and freaking uh, Gab because of uh, censorship. You guys, these guys got to cut the censorship out, man. They're, you got, I mean, if people want to believe that there's uh, that there's aliens in five other galaxies far, far away, uh, that's just an example I'm using. You can't cut people off on their ideas as long as they're not proclaiming violence. You're good. Uh, but going into this article, Facebook plummets 20% after missing the board. U.S. users drop. Guidance disappoints. So uh, they're dropping users. I wonder why that could be. Could it be anything with uh, the, the Ministry of Truth with paid fact checkers uh, hitting people up and telling them that they're wrong what they're talking about? Even It got to the point in some sometimes when uh, people posting memes on there were getting censored. A meme was getting censored. A freaking joke. This is what you get when mm -hmm. you uh, deny people's freedoms, sell yeah. their information, and mm -hmm. sell them it out to the highest bidder. Yeah, so they're, they're, it, through this article that Tyler Durden speaks about, it looks like they're trying to depend on the metaverse to bail them out. Uh, JPM previews expectations, a buy side at quarter four guide, 21% reported growth with expectations to steer quarter one deacceleration and reiterates 91 to 97 uh, billion uh, for year expense guide. With the new reporting structure, expects RL to represent LSD total revenue, which would likely additionally close VR unit shipments, engagements, developers. The bank also expects uh, Facebook to pass 10 million active VR units. It's He says uh, the loan funds group uh, Gene Munster simplifies between the most important metric and growth, uh, growth street looking at 5%. If the base is growing, the company can power IFDA and macro headwinds. If engage, engagement declines, Facebook will need Metaverse to bail them out, which I would assume that more people are disengaging uh, just because, I mean, they're putting, like I said, uh, they still do it, and they've ramped it up since 2020 uh, as far as uh, fake checks and things like that. And when, like I said, when you have pay, paid fake checkers on there, you're gonna, you see a lot of advertisers, too, what some people, if you, if you don't know, understand the situation between right and left, your t your your right wing advertisers are gravitating over to other areas, and these liberal companies, because they didn't want to play ball, they're losing that advertising. They're losing that advertising revenue that they once had. They're moving over to Gab and they're moving over to Getter. When you have that, uh, you're going to lose that advertising revenue that they had. Hopefully, the metaverse thing bails them out. I, I don't know, Kage. What do you think? I think it's a fever dream that they have. I think the dream is coming to a swift and, let's just say, heavy and knee-crumbling knee end. Mm -hmm. Well, and you have here that it says the company's, uh, is the kicker for the company was revenue guidance. It was well below expectations. Our results sent the stock crashing uh, a whopping 23% after hours. So uh, revenue was 33.67, beating estimate 33.43. Advertising revenue was 32.64, uh, 
and EPS is 3.7, missing estimate of 3.84. Operating margin, 37%, missing estimate of, of 37.7%. Uh, and if you go to Tyler Durden's Zero Hedge article, uh, you can read about as far as you could see the graphs and the charts. Uh, it shows, it says, digging into numbers shows that the company's DUE uh, in the U.S. and Roley declined in quarter four. So it was already declining at quarter four. Now enter Getter and Gab coming in. And then we haven't even seen the, the, the truth social. Uh, and this is not a cooler carrying show for the right wing. We're just telling you what's out there in case you didn't know. In case you didn't know, and there is other companies out there that are taking their revenue because uh, Twitter and these guys decided to go all hog wild uh, with information and decided to go all censorship. That's why you're also seeing not only on uh, YouTube, but you're seeing Rumble uh, now pop up as well. The only difference between them is their uploads are slower, uh, but they're gradually going to come around and they're going to get, uh, the, the, it's going to increase there and you're going to see a gravitational, uh, a more gravitation towards that. So there's other options there you could see. So that's, and you're also going to see uh, in the future, there are some other startup companies that are growing, uh, which we'll probably, hopefully we'll be digging into soon uh, that are competition with Amazon as well. So, because people are gravitating towards that, because what's affiliated with Amazon there, Kage? Uh, Whole Foods, there's so mm -hmm. many different well, companies that are associated with it. You them. have your Ministry of Truth, the Washington Compost. The Washington Compost puts out propaganda for the Democrat Party, and so uh, yeah. you, ha you have that. So people, people know that, and so they're gravitating away from uh, Amazon. They're canceling memberships, things like that, because they just think that Amazon got too big for their britches and things like that. Uh, and they feel like they have an unfair trade advantage. Uh, so there, there's other startups. Uh, whether they'll make it, we'll see what happens. Uh, but there was another article written about that. So you can go read this article. I, Facebook is saying they're trying to blame it on iOS. Apple changes, maybe, possibility. Uh, they said there's some negative factors on that. Uh, so they said uh, they're try blaming things on supply chain issues. Uh, advertising budgets for companies that are complaining about the advertisers on there saying this. So to, if we want to use it from Facebook's side, Facebook is saying that uh, advertising are causing is causing advertising is declining uh, because of uh, your your users that for with supply chains, COVID and everything like that. They're saying that's why they're pulling out their advertising because of that. So you have that factor too. So we'll see if this plays out and if they can correct themselves. Maybe Metaverse will bail them out like they're saying. I don't know. What's, what's your take on this? Uh, yeah, I just don't think there's a future for them. Um, Not with censorship. And, and uh, the, the thing is, people want freedom and uh, the ability to express themselves, and mm -hmm. they don't want their data sold to the highest bidder. Yeah, and, so and I since when it... I can see the appeal. And since when is it? Yeah, and since when is it tight to be the gov? And these all these companies and news organizations created this themselves with the social media, with sharing news articles and things like that, because of lack of transparency and actually being a journalist like there used to be back 30, 40 years ago. And so now there's a movement where citizens from all all spectrums of political affiliations have decided to be their own journalists, and people are listening to independent people. Uh, before listening to the Mockingbird Media, cable media. So we'll have to see what happens on that. Uh, uh, but I'm gonna, I, I, it's interesting to see how this plays out. Maybe Metaverse will bring up the revenue. We'll see what happens. Uh, but we're going to go into the stocks. Uh, one of the first stocks I'm going to talk about, Kage, uh, interesting one. This has a lot of heavy hitters with it. Uh, it is currently trending. Uh, it's not a risque stock. Okay, guys, one of the first stocks we're going to talk about is SWN, SWN, Southwest Energy Company. Last tick was $4.73. Going at the chart, well, guys, this looks like a healthy chart, and it better be healthy because it's oil and natural gas. So uh, <laughs> that's a good business to be in, especially during the wintertime. I think I spoke to you guys about this uh, last summer that probably should buy natural gas people. So hopefully uh, people li listened and they cashed out. Uh, Southwest Energy Company is a holding company which engages in the exploration and development and production of natural gas, oil, and natural gas liquids. It operates through exploration and production and marketing segments. The ENP segment includes operations in northern, northeast Pennsylvania, West Virginia, and southwest Pennsylvania. The marketing segment deals in marketing of transportation of natural gas, oil, 
and uh, primarily uh, produced E&P. The company was founded in Spring, Texas. Now, interesting enough that a lot of the, the fracking has been uh, killed and things like that. Could you imagine of the Saudi Arabia of natural gas, which is Pennsylvania, if it could be running at its full operating potential, what could be happening as far as uh, people's heating and oil prices? Oh, yeah. it's It would just be way lower. If people would be able to afford to heat their homes, mm -hmm. not necessarily supplement it with wood-burning stoves. Yeah, we're swim we're swimming in it, but apparently we have to import it still. So, hmm. That's that's interesting. Just some of the things that make you want to go, hmm, you know what I'm saying? I think somebody wrote a song about that. Uh what do you got on stock twits? Because that's where the real traders are at, Kage. What do you got cooking it cooking on the boards? Uh how about this one from Insider Finance? This is a bus member on Stock Twits. He says Momentum activity, S W N is the number nine ticker with Momentum activity traded by institutions with auction transaction volume 4.1 times the average. Yeah, volume. yeah. Th this is huge because I actually am going to talk about an article, what you're just talking about. So so guys, on this one, uh, this is from MarketBeat. It says, large investors have recently made changes in positions to the stock. Thin Trust Capital Advisors acquired a new stake in Southwest Energy during the third quarter, about uh, 28000 F New York Investments Advisors LLC required a new stake at Southwest Energy during the third quarter worth 46. Harbor Investment uh, Advisory LLC acquired a new stake. Uh, there's there's several other here, but another one I found, uh, I believe there was a, a, a teacher's union or some type of uh, uh, pension fund that was also jumping into this as well. So you guys have a lot of heavy hitters jumping into this that are investing in it. So, uh, it is at four dollars and change. It's a it's a healthy stock uh, as far as it's not a, a dollar one where you're wondering if they're coming out of uh, a trailer park or anything like that. Okay, guys, here's something to throw at you. Uh, so obviously we're on the up and up right now. We are in February. What do you guys remember what happened last February according to uh, with weather related issues and stuff like that? Uh, I believe it was. Uh recall well there was the there was the cold arctic blast that hit texas and knocked out all the power and everything like that mm -hmm. and yeah. uh so not to say prey on misfortunes but if you get another a bunch of cold blasts like that like last february and things like that you could be inching up again this is uh i believe you guys discussed in the break that this is this is a swing play uh yes it is a swing play it has uh it has potential. It has on the graph. You are on the charts. You are showing uh, that swing. Uh, where your out point is, I don't know. Where your buy, my buy point would actually not be on a on a on a most talked about stock on Yahoo right now, which it's trending in the top. What, what do you guys got on your analysis there? Um, uh, here's a comment from the, the Godfather, which I think is very relevant to this stock. He says, "SWN bullish. Love when a move." plays out perfectly being greedy when others are fearful and knowing how the markets are moving mm -hmm. will all prevail over inexperienced shorts limitless okay uh also i mean if you look at the chart here as well you have uh if you got in around october uh you made some pretty decent coin there as well uh considering where it was at with the dip uh, going forward, there, with all the with all the heavy hitters that entered this stock, as far as other investors, uh, they're not just going to pull out and short. So the long term potential also has you, the only thing you have to worry about is the summer, as far as when all this stuff uh, decides to uh, die off a little bit. But uh, what do you got there, uh, Hog? Um, well, I'm seeing here. Uh... Beginning, yeah, the beginning of the year, January or the end of December, they uh, purchased GEP Hainesville mm -hmm. LLC. Okay. So that makes them one of the biggest in the two U.S. basins, uh, and so. Uh, where where like where is that where is that company? We did an offering. $1.15 billion, uh, a 4.75% senior notes. 
mm-hmm. due 2032, and a $550 million institutional term loan to fund cash consideration, the acquisition, and tender for $300 million of its 2025 senior notes. Mm-hmm. So, freaking, uh, you know, energy companies, uh, as, uh, as Kage was saying, it's, uh, get in, get out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, with it being with with the chart the way it is, it's obvious a swing play. Uh, you can rise news on this. Where where was that other uh, company's uh, uh, area where they were doing exploration and things like that? What what area did you see them in? Um, well, I know they overlap. Was that in that was that in that Pennsylvania basin or the um, or the West Virginia area? Mm-hmm. I got I got a comment here where you're looking at that. Uh, it looks like our our NG trading said this thing crashed to the bottom in the trading philosophy trading sessions. Twenty five thirty cents a day. Uh, it's like going back out and watching the grass grow. Well, you're gonna see that all the time just because it's it's winter time and so anytime you get a you get a cold spell. Uh, like I said, this is this this stock has a decent swing potential. So uh, that that's where I'm out on this one. There's money to be made, you know. J- d- right now, between now and uh, you know March, there there's money to be made here. So especially right now, everybody's cooking the oil right now. Yeah, that's true. What what do you got on your end there, Kage? As far as uh, as far as are you are you watching this one, or are you uh, is this a, this got swing potential for you, or what? I think this definitely has swing potential. Energy companies usually follow a uh, pattern with the like, like throughout the year mm-hmm. that you can follow. And if you're smart with your uh, money and know what to put in and when to get out, mm-hmm. you can actually make some uh, real good, real good uh, investments on this and uh, investments that will pay out for this one. So I would definitely give this a definite watch. Yeah, and the thing is here too is I could see where the long-term people are saying long-term, just because with anything with uh, any type of supply, uh, you're holding, you're, you're the one that's holding uh, the good, the cards and everything like that, because uh, there's basically a no confidence in uh, Brandon and crew and everything like that to keep things supplied. So uh, you could, you could see record prices all through the boards on all energy coming up in the next two years. It's that bad, guys. I, I don't. I'm not. I'm not trying to just get ratings or anything like that. I'm telling you, it's that bad. Okay, it's bad. So, what's your take on this, Hog? Okay, Hog. What's your uh, take on uh, Southwest Energy? Your final take on that? And whenever anything to do with these uh, these energy companies, especially natural gas in the U.S., you know how it goes. It's uh, seasonal. Uh, you're never going to just, like, you know, get rich. Don't expect anything big off of this one. Just get in and get out because, yeah, long term, it's always going to. Yeah. It's going to dip. And then, uh, you know, when the cold months come around again, then it mm-hmm. fluctuates. And same old story. Yeah. We, we, I, we just need some more information on it, I would say. So, it's decent watch, decent swing play. We'll leave it at that, and there's a lot of heavy hitters going into that, but we'll just see how it plays out. We're going to the next. Okay, guys, the next stock we have is HLBZ. HLBZ, Hellbiz Inc. Last tick was $3.63. After hours, uh, it lost $0.19. Cents. Uh, looking at the chart, uh, this bad boy was almost up to 30 bucks in August around, let's see, September of 21, and then something happened. We're going to find out what that something is. Uh, going into what would you say they do here? Uh, it looks like uh, Help is engaged in the provision of micro mobility solutions, urban areas around the world. It offers a fleet of vehicles, including e scooters, e bicycles, e mopeds, and a user friendly platform. Uh, so, Kage, you can get on to uh, the, the e, uh, e hoverboard and ride that all around. They got one of those, too. Interesting. No, they really don't. They really don't. I was just trying to get you, man. Oh, really? Yeah, they don't have an e-hoverboard. I made that up that flies around and 
kind of uh, sucks. takes you to the thing. Maybe someday we'll get to the Back to the Future, but not now. I'm just trying to mix it up to throw people off, get them thinking, because I know we'll get some Weisenheimer in here sometime that'll be like, oh, dude, they don't have an e-board. Somebody will, will, will listen to that and try to correct me. You watch. I'm, I'm telling you. It happens every once in a while because... It, Yeah, I, ju I just have to throw that out there because some people can't clean the shit out of their ears. So, uh, it offers a, a fleet of vehicles including e-scooters, e-bicycles, uh, e-mopeds, and user-friendly platform. The company utilizes customized preparatory fleet management platform, artificial intelligence, and environmental mapping to optimize operations and business sustainability. Uh, it looks like they're expanding the urban lifestyle products including live streaming services, Hellbiz live food delivery. So, you're going to get food there. Uh, Help is Kitchen and financial services are accessible with mobile applications. Uh, the company was founded by Salvatore Palella Pal in 2015 and is headquartered, guess where, guys? Uh, in Canada. The People's yeah. Republic of New York. Try riding a scooter through Harlem and see if you can make it through. Oh. <laughs> right oh. now. Not, yeah. Uh, going to, uh, Stock Twits, because that's where the real traders are at. Kage, what do you got? Uh, there's uh, a lot of bulls for this stock. Um, how about this uh, comment from Vertical? He's a plus member on StockTwits, and uh, he always uh, brings his receipts. Okay. He said, Vertical, he says, hell did, bullish, ran after market open. It faded afterwards, but came back before close for power hour again. It spiked over four, but sold off afterwards. Mm -hmm. One have an eye on tomorrow as well. Gained 10.1% since first alert. Okay. And he's got his receipt in his uh, chart in his comments. I got a plug from three weeks ago. It says, uh, this This is interesting. Uh, maybe this will bring some momentum to it. I don't know here. But uh, it says today, that this, was, uh, this was on January 13th, so it wasn't a month ago, but it was about a, a three weeks ago. Uh, it, they entered into a memorandum understanding with Wheels, a leading last mile uh, shared electric uh, mobility platform with proprietary integrated helmet technology. Helmet technology, guys. Uh, wheels that is expected to supply Hellbiz with initial fleet of 2,500 seeded e mobility devices first to deploy for four cities in the United States. Uh, where do you think those cities are? It, I didn't see anything where there were. I think they're probably going to be into the uh, biggest cities in the in the country. Okay, so Los Angeles, New York. Here, here's the question, though: If they bring these expensive items, or do we think that uh, what what do what are we thinking as far as are they going to even make it uh, through the operation without being stolen? Because there's a huge crime wave. Last time I checked, uh, and, I, and I'm not I'm not watching fixed or anything like that. It's just it's all over the place. I mean, when you I mean when you got the the president of Kiev. Uh, saying that his his city is safer than some of our cities, uh, you know that's a problem when the whole world's talking about it. So uh, it's it's crazy what's going on. Uh, what 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 do you what what have you found so far on this one there, uh, Hog? Yeah, well, as far as um, as far as the testing goes, I I know I would have thought that that would be an issue too. But yeah, I mean we've already got bird and lime and all these other. Uh, smaller scooters that, that are all over the place, uh, like here in Salt Lake. And I could, you know, like, I guess the, they, people don't, people don't steal them. You know, they, uh, first off, to, to get one out, you got to, like, have a card on file. So, you know, that kind of ensures. Well, my main thing, my main thing wasn't really the, the, as far as, like, the theft part. I meant, sorry to be, like, I, sorry, I meant the, the actual dodging, like, the stray bullets and things like that is what oh, I mean. Yeah, like getting killed. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, basically well, basically that. everybody taking yeah. everything you got and, and you know, that that's that's my main concern about it. Like, I don't see a lot of people in certain areas getting on those things without uh, worrying about getting injured there. Uh, so well, maybe they can uh, start uh, renting out uh, bulletproof vests. Yeah, they... You know, that actually is a good idea. If someone wants to come up with that, you might have to start renting out bulletproof vests in some of these places. It's pretty bad there. Uh, it looks like uh, in, on Investor's Place, they have, they have this stock could pop sometime soon. I'm going, this was on, on the Twits there, Kage. I'm surprised you didn't bring it up here. 
Okay, so Investor's Place, I found this on the Twits there. This is, like I said, pretty important there, Kage. Uh, CEO of Hellbiz recently made substantial purchase in his own company, prompting investors to wonder what else is bet what what is he betting uh, for his company. Uh, it looks like in Form Four received by the U.S. Securities Exchange Commission yesterday, Hellbiz CEO Salvatore Palella purchased 300,000 shares of HLMBZ for 578. In an earlier transaction, Salvatore purchased 200,000 shares for 820. Uh, Hellbiz recently currently trading at the three level. So he's sitting on a significant loss. Okay, now, but here's the key, though. In recent Hell Biz news, the micromobility uh, company expanded its partnership with Segway. So that's a heavy hitter coming into the mix, guys. That's hu that's huge right there. You got any oh, takes on that? They're partnering with Segway? Yeah. They're expanding oh. their partnership with Segway. All right. Okay. So the partnership with Segway will supply micromobility uh, vehicles to Hell Biz. Uh, such such as electric scooters and bikes. In addition, based off the partnership, Hellbiz expands uh, ex expects to have over 35,000 vehicles on the road by mid 2022. So maybe that will help uh, recover uh, where it was at before. Now, are we going to see that mark again? That remains to be seen. You know, I mean, what what, what did you guys find? Uh, what other things did you find there, Kage? Did you find anything on your end? HLBZ. So we have a 3.82 million float, and the CEO just bought 1 million shares at $3.54 mm -hmm. share. Bullish as F. Yeah, so he, he knows something that's going down. Uh, also, uh, the, reason, the reason why you saw, I mean, obviously you had your drop off, but the, the, when it started, when it made its debut on NASDAQ, that's where, in August, that's where you had your uh, spike. So the reason why we said that at the beginning is just because, uh, you know, we're new to this stock, things like that. But uh, you learn new things there. Uh, the institu It says institutional owners may be conducting additional research before deciding uh, to buy uh, Hellbiz is what they're saying there. Uh, what do you got on your end there, Kage? Or sorry, uh, Hog? Uh, I think, uh, man, they've got, they're all over the board with uh, mm -hmm. their technologies. Um, yeah. But focusing on the mobility thing, I, they, they've got especially the Segway coming in. Um, yeah, and they've got I, all sorts of things uh, um, going on. Like, for instance, uh, they've got geofencing. Uh, that could be huge. To, to these technologies so mm -hmm. that, uh, you know, like they can control uh, the speed. Like, for instance, you can't speed on these things. Uh, because they, they have a GPS in them, and so they know what, what street you're on, and sort of yeah. like how fast you're going to go, all kinds of safety devices built in. It's, it's actually kind of cool, because one of the biggest things that you see with uh, these technologies, uh, like with Bird and Lion, is uh, a lot of like resistance from, uh, from legislation. Mm -hmm. like, uh, people still hate them, they, you know, people complain, and they're on the sidewalks doing all these things, and uh, it seems like they've got a good idea, a good idea to kind of mitigate that and get, mm -hmm. get around that. It now, guys, is it is it too far of a reach to say that this is uh, a bargain basement price for where it is from, considering where it started when it entered the market to thirty bucks? I say that's fair. I say that's fair. I'm not because yeah. I'm going through this board right here, guys, and I'm not seeing any bears. I'm, I'm seeing. I mean. I'm seeing I'm seeing everybody's boy. I don't see any sour patches here. Uh, you would think that since it started out at thirty bucks, that you would see a ton of sour patches. And I'm going through days and days of data here. I've got no I've got no bears yet. So um, I, I think it's simply too cheap for where it's at, in my opinion. So yeah. I I would I would say for me, I would highly watch this uh, and see where this plays out. Uh, the only thing, let's see, someone has a plug on CNBC. If CNBC is something, you might as well do the opposite. Uh, it says, uh, analysts on CNBC said, uh, most of this has no value. So there you go. Right there, that's one red flag right there. Pretty much when they say something on CNBC, it means they're trying to hook up their buddies. Okay? So that you're going to sell, and they're going to, uh, they're going to, their buddies are going to jump in on it. So, that's what you got to remember about the alphabet media. When they say things, 
pretty much almost do the opposite because they're projecting for their friends. They're always trying to cover their friends' aces. That's why Jim Cramer is a joker. So he'll get on with his pom-poms and everything, and then uh, wasn't that didn't that guy uh, say that we, everything was okay for the 2008 crisis when it happened before it happened? And everybody lost. Pretty sure he did. So you can correct me in the comment sections if you want. Uh, Hog, what do you got on your end on this? What do you, what else do you think? <laughs> Check this out. These guys in there into everything. Mm -hmm. um, they have the ESC, the uh, the E Scooter Championship. It's actually a whole. It's a, it's a that's pretty like sweet. International race, and they they developed like a scooter that goes a hundred kilometers an hour. Mm -hmm. So dang. Uh, yeah. They uh they know how to market. Yeah. Yeah, they 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 look like they they've got and you don't see a lot of pump up the gym on the Actually, I did see some stuff on the Twitter feed not pump up the gym. I did find a bear uh there Kagi on Investor Thinker. I don't know if you saw his take. He said the company is is at a loss. What's wrong with all you guys pumping this failure? So, there I did find a bear just for the record there. Uh yeah, there's risk. There, there's yeah. risk in a lot of these things, you know? Yeah. Well, that's what some of these guys don't realize, dude. It's like if you bought in if you bought in at 29 and 28 and then you just lost your can, uh then it is what it is, dude, you know? Or your ass or whatever, you know, can whatever. Uh what what else do you got Kage on there for anything? Uh there's this comment from a uh bear I think for this one. He's it, his name is Profits in Yards. He says, "Did I pump HLBZ?" Did I tell you to go out and slap the app? Did I stay to chase it up? Hell no, I never did. In fact, I told you I was dumping my position and actually way too early. I then told you that this will never probably close around 3.60. Maybe I'm being negative. The point is I never pub my picks. <laughs> I've got actually a funny post on Twitter from this company that I saw. Uh, Hellbiz tweets out five days ago. Now, if some of you got... I can't believe they're posting this, but it's today's society, okay? So it is what it is. Safety tips for riding in cold weather. They're putting it out there because apparently people are getting all jacked up. Uh, know the majority of your route. Well, obviously, that should be common sense to know your route. Close, uh, closed toe shoes are a must, you think? Uh, let's see. Keep... Keep uh, speed to a minimum to avoid slipping. You, no kidding. Uh, bundle uh, layer up. Yeah, when you go out in the cold, don't wear a pair of uh, shorts and, and a mini skirt, things like that. It might not be good. Uh, waterproof everything, shoes and jackets. I, I didn't think I was going to get wet in the snow riding the scooter around. So there you have it for common sense for uh, today today's day and age. So there, there's your safety tip for the day for riding a scooter in the cold weather, in the snow. So, but anyway, that... I, Everything uh, looks good to me. I just keep it on a watch and see where everything plays out. It is simply too cheap for where it's at. Uh, please don't come back on the show and say that I'm pumping it because I'm not. I'm just telling you, stating the obvious, that uh, for what they got going on, relationship with Segway, uh, find out where you're getting in, and if you're getting in, get in. What do you got there, uh, Kage? Uh, I'd give this a definite watch. I mean, it seems like kind of a heavy company that Europe would like. I guess, because mm -hmm. they're so free-thinking and whatnot and aggressive. Yeah, they, they could use a little help on the Twitter feed with some of the people tweeting, but it's not as bad as the outhouse or anything like that on there as far as go drink a margarita or uh, have fun freezing in your house when it's cold and you can't afford it. You know, stuff like that. They're, they have better PR than that, but it could use a little work there for stating the yeah. obvious. I, so. But I do think this is something that's worth watching, and uh, if you're into scooters, this may be one that you might want to get in on. Yeah. What about you there, uh, Hog, or Air Hog? Yeah. Uh, kind of along uh, I'm with Kage on this. Uh, Europe, uh, I'm sure the Euro market's a lot bigger for this. Mm -hmm. uh, just for the fact, also, that uh, they uh, are the density. You know, they're saying yeah. the layouts, you know, yeah, I could see this one. I'm with you guys. I could see this one playing out better in Europe than I do like here. For sure. Because yeah. like you like you brought up in the break as far as the car angle, uh, 
like a lot like a lot of people here those those things are sitting on the side everybody's carring it uh you might have a kid here and there that jumps on the scooters and stuff like that but uh europe would definitely be it my only yeah, my concern yeah my concern with there. the cities is just that uh when you have uh just complete chaos every day uh some people are going to be wary what routes they're taking on a scooter and some of these e-things when they don't know if uh, they're going to be paying for it with their life. It's a concern. So yeah. it's just something, uh, you know, that you have to be concerned about. So uh, we're out on this one unless you guys have anything to add and we're going to go to the next. So make sure when you're riding your scooter, uh, watch your wallet, watch your route, and uh, wear a jacket, I guess. Yeah, just keep in mind, uh, we, you know, you always see... I always see plenty of dorks on their little uh, their road bikes wearing their tights and everything like that. Yeah. Riding on the side of the road, you know, cars are whizzing past them at 50 miles an hour, so. Yeah. Yeah, watch out for cars, too. That's always important as well, so. But we'll be back in two and two. Next one is crypto for you. Okay, guys, the next stock we have is OLB. OLB, last tick was $2.02. Year-to-date uh, -date chart on this showing everybody on the screen. This one looks decent. It's got a lot of heavy hitters in it, guys. Uh, going into uh, what would you say they do here, they engage in the provisional integrated business solutions payment facilitator verticals. The firm offers solutions that manufacturers, retailers, single store retailers. It focuses on providing merchants with products and services through various online platforms, including financial transactions, processing services, support for crowdfunding, and the other capital raising initiatives. The company was founded by Ronnie Yakov and is headquartered in the People's Republic of New York. So going on to uh, stock twits, because that's where the real traders are at. Kage, what do you have on your end? Uh, I'm seeing mostly bulls for this stock. Um, I'll take, this is a take from De Princey. He says, bullish, OLB. CEO and currently own more than 60% of outstanding shares. CEO alone owns 4.5 million shares, which is more than the current free float of 3.6 million shares. Interesting. Focused on share price reaching its analyst PT of $15. Let that sink in. You're welcome. Yeah, and looking at the website as far as a lot of a lot of people affiliated with this company, uh, it's freaking huge, guys, and the amount of, of processing for what they do and the amount of transactions. If you go and look at the numbers that they have posted on there, uh, it's ridiculous. And for the price point that it is at, it is also, and I'm not just saying this because I don't even own shares in the company. I'm just saying, uh, at looking at this, it's pretty impressive. Uh, if you go to the old Yahoo News, uh, you, you're, we're looking at uh, the latest uh, 16 hours ago news. Uh, they announced, the company announced that the merchant services annual transaction volume rate has reached $1.35 billion. So uh, with that, that is why you're seeing pops all over the all over the market and you're seeing all the search engines go bonkers uh, because of this. The transaction volume was a result of 28.5 million transactions. After the company's acquisition of portfolio CBD merchant accounts in the last quarter, OLB has start uh, the current year with the highest revenue and RAN rate in the history of the company. Uh, as a result, as a diversified merchant base, which is not reliant on large merchants for high dollar transactions, the company's e-commerce merchant service business is tracking an anticipated annual revenue rate of exceeding $36 million for 2022. Uh, since the acquisition, the company has benefited from onboarding approximately 150 new merchant accounts per month. So they're keep on adding... Uh, the revenue just keeps on going up. Uh, could you do you guys see a potential here of uh, with more growth and more acquisitions to where I, I'm th I'm thinking on my end that I would see the target share on this uh, should be on the north end, not uh, going on the south end. Uh, what what do you guys got? Well, I think uh, there's a lot of potential here. Mm -hmm. I think it's definitely uh, worth a look. Um, that being said, if it's trending, just be aware of the uh, the uh, naysayers and and also know where your buy point is if you want to get in on this. Here's a little, uh, let's say, 
hit with the monkey wrench, a little monkey wrench to throw out there, a speculation. Uh, you know how I like to speculate and do a little spinning because that's the the fun part of the show. So OB, OBD uh, has its has, has its feet win with the CBD marketplace, and it's seen an increase in transaction volume in the overall market uh, as the size of that grows. What's to say there 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 had there was a movement in 2021 to nationalize uh you know marijuana things like that and pot things like that what what's to say that the, that the that the dems to try to gander up votes for 20 to gather up votes for 2022 because they're getting their their butts kicked right now what's to say they don't try to go like for a nationalized bill to get the bait get people all drummed up for that just because some of those people just go straight ticket where there's some people in an off year for midterms they don't the enthusiasm's not there uh, Hog, what do you th- what do you think? You think that's uh, you think that might be that could factor into this yeah. too, or it's a non-factor? It's a possibility. You mean uh, like nationally legalize it? Yeah, just go national. I mean, they were talking about it last year, but they were trying to get the the build back broke bill basically through with all that. And the, what what if they need something to get more turnout, like they did in 2018? Because nationally, uh, you know. Pot, pot was at the, a lot of that turnout from 2018 had to do with a lot of the uh, down ballot race down ballot uh, issues. Uh, so what's to say that they don't go forward with this and uh, to get more thing? If they do it, if they go with that, that could rally up the base for 2022 to ter- make a turnout a bigger turnout. I don't know what do you, whatever you guys think there. That, that could be the one card that they have up their sleeves. Mm-hmm. They're waiting to play, and if you see that. Then yeah, and if these guys are heavily involved in that in that market for the getting a fraction of those transactions, because uh, it says, according to February 2021 reports, Grandview Research relating to the current future of CBD market sector, the market is estimated to witness uh, a growth of approximately 20% to 23 in the next five years. Hemp-derived CBD is expected to grow uh, to CA, CAGR of 23.4% post uh, pandemic owing an increase in demand from pharmaceutical sector as rising awareness among consumers regarding health because everybody's moving towards pharmaceutical for, for healthier nutraceuticals and things like that and uh, with uh, with your cannabis uh, and if they're in that processing uh, with that uh, you know what's there everything is on the table for everything you know because right now they're in tank mode their their polling is just atrocious so you had a you had a you had a poll out the other day that had fifty percent of people want the president impeached, and that was in Rasmussen. Now the the the, neg, the negativity in the alphabet polls is showing there. So what a good way to increase the base to to get people to the polls to drum up something like this. Uh, it's just speculation on my point, but it's something to think about with this stock. Uh, you know, and it like I said, it's simply too cheap with me not owning it. I don't own a dime of it. I'm just saying that it's it's cheap where it's at right now. So what also else do you understand if that happens though? Um, you know, it, there'll be a lot. It won't be a secret, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and and the thing is that if they if they have a major share in that fraction of transaction, those transactions, uh, their sales will blow up through the roof, and they're just going to keep on growing. You're going to get more people wanting to do capital with them, things like that, and the company just going to keep on growing. And you're going to see Mr. Two Dollars, and it's going to be up. And like, so that that's just my take. Uh, someone on here on the Twits, Kage has uh, ready for a reverse, huge, uh, unusual volume here. Uh, so that that's what that's what he that's that's an interesting take there. What do you got there, Kage, on on the boards? Um, yeah, for this one, I think a lot of these uh, stocks are mainly based on the. Uh, emotional side where emotions should be at to be left at the door when you're doing money stocks like these mm-hmm. um like for, like for example uh this is a comment from iron man 09 the business case for a much higher pps is there with analyst with that supported the rest is simple shorts are a bull's best friend yeah they are they were 31 million shares. I love short, short stocks. 80 million traded on a 5.5 million float. There are a lot of shares to be covered at a borrow rate approaching 
Okay, I help. Uh, go ahead. The the price dropped within a range to cover at 3:20 p.m. and 5.2 million shares traded between 3:20 p.m. and 8 p.m. That tells me there are tens of millions of short positions that still need to be covered on this tiny 5.5 million float. That's going to be interesting to see how that plays out on Friday as well. Uh, Marine Marine One has uh, he has a quote from uh, the CEO. He says the CBD merchant portfolio acquisition expected to add 25 million to the revenue this year and is anticipated to contribute 5 million in incremental uh, EBITDA, uh, adding to improve financials. Uh, and that's going to have, they're going to have no outstanding debt. This should give the financial flexibility to ramp up uh, their cryptocurrency related operations, which they're expected to ramp up on that as well, uh, which is huge in itself. Uh, this dip you're seeing, uh, just wait till uh, the party ends with the 34, uh, where we're at in the market, where, wherever the number is today, because it's here and there everywhere. Uh, it'll be, when, when that goes, there'll be other movements everywhere else. Okay, guys, so with the amount of financial transaction this has and with as many uh, companies they're affiliated with, uh, I'm going to say this is an extreme watch here for me and, uh, you know, find the buy point where to get in. Uh, and I, I would say definitely interested in looking into this company. It, there's just too much going on and you can't ignore all the transactions they have and all the companies they're affiliated in. So I say this one uh, is something to way, way look at and check out. Uh, Kage, what do you have on your end as far as your opinion of what you've seen? Is it pretty impressive? I'd have to say this is a cheap stock to get into at the price point it is. It's better uh, It's better than a sub, wouldn't you say? Yeah, it, it's definitely worth considering if you want to get into the uh, stock market. Um, as far as uh, this would be a high watch for me. Mm -hmm. um, and if you want to your buy point in just uh just make sure you uh, stick with it and be patient with it mm -hmm. okay that's not a bad take hog what do you got on this do you do you like this uh i i'd like to see more on the crypto angle for me what about you so yeah, i'd say uh just um like anything you know cbd crypto get, covers all the bases so uh i think it's more of a long term uh, thing to keep an eye on, and it's not something you should expect to uh, be uh, like a pump and dump. Yeah, I I, I would agree. So, uh, I, I'm I'm out on this one, and uh, I think we gave our opinions on all of them. So do your research and do your DD, uh, and uh, you know it is what it is. So uh, I'm out. What about you guys? I'm out too. So good night, people. Don't make it a dog. Oh, he's got peace out and I'm um, don't make it a dog show. Good night now. <laughs>